welcome to this Mita deep dive series where we are going to be chatting about PR for cannabis dispensaries. My name is Ashley Oaks and I am the Director of Marketing for Proven Media. I also have with me today Kim Prince and Nico Catanzaro. Do you both want to introduce yourselves? Kim, why don't you go first? Thank you, Ashley. Hi, everyone. I'm Kim Prince. I'm the founder of Proven Media. We're a marketing communications firm um, based in PR, and we've been named one of the top five most powerful firms. So I'm super happy to be on here with my team today. Thank you, Ashley. And Nico. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Ashley. Um, as she said, I am Nico Catanzaro. I'm the president at Proven Media. I've been with the firm for seven years. I've had uh, my background is in literary arts and history, and that seemed to translate very well into the public relations space, which is really about amplifying who you are, what you do, and making sure the public knows the best side of you. That takes us right into what I wanted to chat about first. A lot of times people are confused on what public relations even is. So why don't we start there um, and just give a brief overview of you know, what the types of things that you do for your clients. Nico, do you wanna jump in? Sure. Uh, so as I was saying, and what we like to say at Proven Media, that you know your story and your public relations firm helps you tell it. And essentially the function of a public relations firm or agency is to help a company, uh, an individual, a brand get their message out to the public. Um, there are a variety of ways to do that. Um, and there also are several other components involved beyond just getting the story out. Um, public relations is also great for not only just promoting the company, but being there in times of crisis. If something comes up and um, the company needs to make aware to the public uh, how they're handling a situation, that's when the PR team really steps in and, and steps up their game and makes that uh, really transparent for the public of what's happening and also um, helps put a spin on things usually in terms of a positive light or how things are gonna progress in a positive way for that company or brand. Um, but if you wanna get down just to the very basics of it, it's making sure that your message as a company or brand is being controlled. Um, if you don't have a firm, like a public relations firm, or if you're not doing it internally, if you're not controlling that message, then the media can control that. And we know that, you know, that might not always be a positive way in how they decide to talk about what you're doing. So um, that's kind of just in general. I totally agree. I think something that um, Proven Media does really well is even just starting with how a brand differentiates itself from all of the other brands in the cannabis space because it's becoming overpopulated right now. Um, and so part of telling your story is really defining what that is as well. Agreed, agreed. Ashley and Nico, I like to think um, in terms of PR, I like to think sometimes what we do is we take all the thoughts out of uh, a team's brain. What is the company about? What do they do? Who's their target? They generally have it all up here, but in terms of getting it onto paper so they can share it with others, so it's very succinct. So it could be used for content. It could be used for a press release. Really, that's I think one of the, one of our gifts is being able to convey very clearly what the goals, the mission, the um, the key messages are for a company. And as Nako said, what I find very fascinating is that if you don't control your own messaging, someone else will. Like Nako said, it may be the media. It may be a competitor. It may be a former employee but you've got to be proactively, methodically controlling your messengers or you're very likely that someone will step in and uh, do it for you and it may not have the results you would wish for. Exactly. So staying on the topic of just general PR, let's get a little bit into how does editorial, when it comes to PR, differ from advertising and that type of messaging? 
I'll jump in here. I'm very, NACO is very, very creative, really understands the complexities of the differences. I will get straight to the point on some of the very basics that I connect with. Um, and that's an editorial, you don't have complete control. You have to place your trust in an, a, an editor or a reporter or a producer. Um, and that's where a PR firm comes in. Um, ex, it, it, a PR firm can play a very important role because they have relationships and they know how to create the story for a, for a, a journalist or a producer. But with paid advertising, you can control 100% of it. It's very expensive. You control exactly where it appears, when it appears, what it says, what it looks like. You have complete control and then you turn that over for someone to publish. With editorial, it's much more of a nuanced um, story. And, and then in turn, it's more valuable because the reader understands the difference very subtly between something that's paid and and is is paid and literally controlled or uh, whereas a news article is like a third party endorsement of all the great things that you or your company is doing. Yep, that's exactly what I was going to say is that it's almost that third party, you know, amplification in the sense of I didn't pay for this. They actually wanted to feature me. Exactly. So that's definitely a greater value to somebody when they use PR. Yes, especially especially in cannabis where you're looking to build credibility because there's so many people who are um, in the space and um, you, you really have to do your due diligence on the companies that you're working with. I was gonna say too, is that going along why editorial is more valuable. Um, I feel like a lot of times people usually come back to the PR end of things and say, well, at least with this ad, I know it's gonna be seen by X amount of people, or I know it's gonna get this amount of clicks, or there, there's some really you know, key analytics and data points that you get with advertising. Um, but the counterpoint to that is someone's looking up your company or your brand, they're probably gonna be looking it up on Google. And what their eyes are gonna to go to is not a paid ad, it's gonna to go to, let's say, an article in Forbes. And I know from just past clients that I've worked with where you know, we've helped them get these amazing editorial content and coverage on them or their, their company. And those news stories continue to be read. They continue to populate pretty high up on Google when it's searched. So it, it continues to just bring value to that company. Um, and it's something that readers and audiences will gravitate towards. Um, we've learned very quickly how to tune out, you know, the commercials when they come up on the television or um, on our TV or our, on our, our like computer screens too um, with streaming. So we know how to tune out those ads, and that's why um, true editorial is is such a powerful medium. And with these publications really turning from print to online, I think there's um, a lot of capabilities as far as SEO and helping you know your own website ranking when your name and your link are having value in those articles as well. Ashley, I will say, and thank you for, I don't wanna pivot necessarily, but what's essential is even with social and with some of the, um, you know, like the streaming, et cetera, um, especially sharing on social, you've got to have news links to share. These news links are very powerful if you share them. We met with someone and they literally said to us, oh, do you just do traditional media? And I said, w what do you think you're sharing? They're the links from like Nako said, from Forbes, from the New York Times, from um, uh, Politico, from Business Insider, uh, from in our state, from ArizonaMarijuana.com. So always making sure that this, or understanding that the stories you place tie in with SEO and with Google searches and sharing them is, is an essential part of that chain. Yep. So when you start out with a PR client, there's always some sort of strategy in place. And why is this important? And what are some of these things that a strategy entails for a PR client? 
Do you want me? I'll, I'll start off. Um, I think getting down to basics first is what are the goals of that, that company or that brand? Who are they trying to reach? Um, what are the key messages that they focus on? And that might, you know, require PR assistance in terms of building those out. There might be, you know, internal company core values, but what are the ones that are facing to their customers? Um, what are their mission, their values? Um, what what uh, are those keywords that they are trying to utilize in their company collaterals, on their website, in their social media messaging? All of those things um, are very valuable on the PR end because PR is essentially, you know, creating a way to amplify those messages um, on a greater scale. Another aspect of it is getting down to not just the goals, but who the target audience is on a very, you know, general sense. You can just start off with, with is it B2B or B2C? Are, are you trying to reach consumers um, or are you trying to uh, reach other businesses. Um, that really will help solidify how, um, what different mediums you're targeting as, as the PR firm. So that means that if it's B2B, you might be looking at more trade publications. Um, if it's consumer, maybe you're trying to work a little bit more with influencers, um, bloggers, uh, obviously a number of different news sites in general too are consumer oriented. Um, and what we find is really helpful um, on the PR end when we're reaching out to media is having the right imagery in place to really tell that story. Um, we have all heard that, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So you can be reaching out to a reporter and talking about how amazing this new product is, or you know, this entrepreneur that just has great energy and they're doing all these great things. But if you have a great photo to go with that, um, that the reporter and that media outlet can use right away, um, then that's key to making sure that that effectively kind of moves forward on the PR end. And maybe that leads to an interview, maybe that leads to a full feature story, major, maybe that even leads to a cover story, which we have really you know, helped secure lots of um, print cover stories just due to the photos that we were able to you know, help coordinate for our clients and those companies and those brands. Um, it's essentially a reporter or editor's dream is when you have the right imagery to go along with the story. It just kind of makes it, um, you know, an easy choice for them to move forward on something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I think going into the strategy as well is, you know, what are the types of things that our company wants to be known for as well you know like how can we catch some trends with those um and just making sure that whatever efforts are being put forth it's in the right categories for what you're trying to promote for your business as well that's definitely part of the strategy i would say and and ashley and nico i would also add that Communications takes so many forms from your e-newsletters to your social, to your press releases, to your collateral materials and your employee manual even. So really understanding and getting as in, with getting intention minded with your materials. So you're not just wasting a ton of energy on communications. You could literally, you know, with all the communications tools, um, have more than a full-time job at, on your hand, on your hand. So making sure with your, with your public relations that it's very, as Nico was saying, intentional. What do you want to achieve? Does it all tie back to the annual campaign or the quarterly campaign? Understanding what you want to convey. Mm -hmm. How would you say somebody should go about creating a campaign? You know, I might be too old school, so I'll let Nico um, follow up here, but I just want to say, you know, starting to put everything on paper. The first of all, I mean, I would say contact a professional, obviously, 
I mean, that's what we, <laughs> that's what we do. But I mean, the thing is, it, if, if you have the budget, it does pay to start working with a professional to really start pulling it out. It's like, a, it's like a business plan. You don't go into business without a business plan. Um, PR should be part of your marketing plan. So understanding, you know, starting to put it on paper, what do you want to achieve and et cetera. So I'm going to let Nate go though. I think she might have some compelling um, ideas. Uh, yeah, no, I think um, one of the things to think about when developing a PR campaign or and strategy is, is what the timeline is too. What is the focus? I mean, is it a new product launch? Um, when is the expected time that that product is going to be out and available to the public? And then kind of work back off of that expected date because we all know things, you know, don't always go as planned. But if you have an idea in general when something is going to happen and you want to get, you know, uh, drive up some media response about, about that, Having, having that initial date and then working back off of that, you know, month by month, uh, you know, quarterly. If, if it's, you know, announcing um, something, let's say, like a new product and maybe it's coinciding with the holidays, you need to understand that depending on the media that you're reaching out to, if it's, let's say, a national uh, print publication, some of those lead times are six months out. So just kind of being realistic, I think, on the campaign end is that it does take a lot of planning. I feel as though, you know, we we live in an age where things are really instant and there is an instant gratification thought process to how things go about. But in when it comes to PR, you, you want to be strategic and you, and you need to be ahead of the game and you need to be proactive in getting you know, all your ducks in a row. You can't just be like, well, we're going to launch a new product next month. So is that enough time? And it's like, well, sure, you can get some coverage on that. But like having, you know, a decent amount of lead time will really just change the results. Um, and obviously for the better. So I, I think that's one of the, the things to keep front and center too is is having a, a timeline in place to really get the best uh, results for your goals. And I think you touched on it a little bit, but a lot of the times clients don't understand the lead times that print publications have. You were talking about, you know, on a national scale, it can be up to six months before something hits the stand from a story that you were working on. On a local end, it's usually about three months. And then, you know, even with dailies, you know, daily newspapers, they're working a couple of weeks ahead, usually for some of those future stories. So I think keeping that in mind when you're working with a PR company as well is important to remember. And if I may say, Ashley, if, um, if someone's attending an event, you know, the directory for the um, trade show, <clears throat> making sure that the messaging is getting in there, but giving yourself enough time to get the, get the press release to them, get the image to them, coordinating, understanding what options they have for helping you spread the word. So yeah, the planning time is essential to maximize almost everything we do or a company would want to do. So you just touched on something. Um, in PR, we're not always coordinating just with the media. There's lots of other things that um, PR encompasses, like you said, you know, a conference or a trade show. So let's get a little bit into what are some of those things outside of media um, that a PR firm or in your PR plan should be happening? Nico, I'll let you go ahead because you're, you're on that stuff every day. <laughs> okay. Um, so obviously beyond reaching out to the media, trying to get news coverage and whatnot, um, Another great way to promote your company is through um, awards. So I think, you know, making sure you're kind of keeping a database um, of awards that might fit for your company or brand. Um, there are lots out there, obviously, on a local, regional, national level that could fit, um, depending on, on 
what you do. Um, it might be business focused, uh, you know, like um, in terms of business growth, it might be, you know, um, like favorite product. It might be a number of things, but I think award submissions are a great way um, to just continue to, to boost company image and further promote it. Um, speaking events, uh, speaking opportunities, making sure that there's maybe someone at your company that can kind of take on that spokesperson role, um, maybe the face of the company um, that can bring that charisma to the stage or a webinar, um, show their expertise, show that your team has the talent and knowledge and, and professionalism um, that makes them stand out. Um, and then of course, you know, internally companies have their own mediums of, of reaching out to um, their database of contacts. So as we were saying, newsletter communications, um, social media, there are great ways that you can take what you build on the PR strategy and level and repurpose it across a number of channels. Obviously, maybe the verbiage might change a little depending on how you know your tone and voice for your newsletter will probably be a little bit different from how you're speaking on Instagram or on an Instagram story um, or, or even on your blog. Your blog might be more article kind of fact-based um, approach with a little bit more of, of a, a scientific feel maybe. So um, just understanding that there's a lot of ways to take what the, those PR messages are that you're getting out to the public and also redistributing it to your own database of contact contacts, um, just in, in a different kind of tone and voice, depending on, you know, who your audience is. Perfect. Um, we talked about this a little bit, but it kind of goes back to strategy as well for your company or your brand. How does local, regional, national, and international PR differ from each other? How do you slice and dice that media um, to benefit your brand? Do you want to start, Kim? Or? Yeah, go ahead, Nico. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, well, we, like, if we like to look at it as if you're kind of got that bird's eye view of a map. So start where you're located and build out concentric circles from there. So start local. Um, getting local press is a great way to kind of build access to those more regional media channels. Um, the more coverage you're getting will maybe lead to national attention, if not international attention, depending on what type of company you're running. Um, and then I think it's important to consider, you know, let's say a business journal type publication. How do they kind of slice and dice their content is going to kind of come into play with who you're trying to reach out to to get coverage. Um, are you, is this a general business story? Are you looking for a more feature entrepreneurial story? Is it, uh, a new tech innovation, every medium out there, whether or not it's a business focused publication or a lifestyle focused publication, they're gonna have all these different little subsets within it um, in an old school way, like what's the reporter's beat? So knowing those within um, those different publications and then obviously on a geographic level like locally regionally nationally um, you can really see how you can start to get very specific with your outreach efforts to give you the best possible um, you know turnaround that something will come of it um, if you're a tech company and you end up you know reaching out to let's say the beauty and wellness reporter within, you know, your your local newspaper, that's probably not going to work out so great. So what we always suggest, and that's why it's always helpful to hire the professionals, but really knowing uh, who the media are 
within a certain publication to make sure that you're reaching out to the right people who are going to be interested in that story. Um, also, I think it's important to consider uh, trends and just the differences between different geographies. So let's say what's happening seasonally in the Midwest or Southwest in the summer is gonna be a lot different than what's happening on the East Coast, um, just in terms of weather trends and things that people are gonna be interested in looking for. Uh, so keeping those things in mind, so you're not, it shouldn't just be like a very generic outreach. Um, there is a subtlety to how, how you're reaching out to the media. What are they gonna be interested in? You know, there's certain holidays and events that are happening on a super local level, but aren't happening nationally. But there's also obviously larger stories that are in the national circuit that maybe your company has, um, you know, some sort of tie in to that, that you might want to try to utilize when you reach out to the media. Um, I know that kind of got a little, little complicated or complex, but obviously there's, there's a little bit involved. I think um, every, you know, press release or topic that you're using in PR um, differs between local, regional, and national publications as well, because, you know, if a goal of a company that, you know, might be able to get national exposure, if they're having a local event, you know, pitching that, event for ticket sales or something like that doesn't make sense on the national scale, but maybe a recap of what the event was afterwards would make sense to get some national exposure to show the uniqueness of what they were doing. So there's always like a time and place for those different media lists as well, I think. All right. um, so something for a lot of cannabis companies is having an end game or an exit strategy. Um, and this is something that plays a role with PR significantly for these types of companies because of the, you know, investors or stakeholders that could be watching the company. So what are some things in PR that are important for the companies that do have that type of end goal to, you know, sell the company in the end? Actually, I'll jump in here and start, and then I'm going to let Nako finish up again because she's got such great experience with all of these um, more intricate PR maneuvers. Um, let me just say that PR can be used to create a perceived value about your company, to create a perceived timeline of success for your company. A lot of companies that we work with they're privately owned and they're looking for possible investors or on a larger scale, they're publicly traded and they're looking to communicate with their investors. So whether it's from the start, from the, the, the startup phase where they're looking to acquire funding through, like you said, the exit strategy where they're trying to um, sell, merge their company with another company, um, each phase, each step, of the communications is geared towards that goal. So um, that's where it really gets fun. It really gets exciting um, for me is some of those more complex strategies of reaching communication, reaching investors, reaching stakeholders and communicating with those who have a vested interest in the value of your company and what you're bringing to the table. So that's a very exciting PR play for, for us. Nico again is, and, and Ashley again, you're brilliant at it as well. Um, but so I'm sure you guys have some thoughts on that also. Um, just to create like a baseline, I think sometimes companies forget that, you know, just keeping an ongoing press release going out about the company and, you know, what's going on with the company, what's new, who have they hired lately, you know, even though they might seem like boring press releases. Um, it's something that if you're continuously putting that out on like a newswire, if you have it on your website, it just shows that growth for that company and keeps that footprint going for them um, so that they can tell that story. Yes, there, this is like kind of off topic, but kind of on topic. There's a fun little biker bar in my little community that we live in. Every time we go there and it's family friendly, you know, whatever, um, more or less, um, 
but there's something new. They, they've got new music, they've expanded the seating area, they've got new t-shirts. So you, it's so exciting to be a part of something where there's always something new, always something going on. To be able to convey that for a, a cannabis company in a larger sense is very exciting. People like being involved with companies that are doing things. Um, and like you said, Ashley, it may seem like a small victory if you're in, in the weeds with these companies and you're like, oh my God, we just hired someone, why is that news? Well, to someone else, that's pretty cool stuff. So um, as you said, creating a perception um, of what's going on, using communications to convey that this company, your company is very exciting. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of potential um, is, is, a, is a really, anyway, it's, it's a very fun, um, it's a fun challenge. It's great for a company, I'll say. Agreed. And I think too, it also goes back to that, you know, you know your story, but having someone to tell it for you is also extremely helpful. I mean, you can be doing great things at your company, you know that your revenue growth is through the roof, you've hired all these like top tier talent, um, expanded the team. But if you're not putting that out there in some sort of, uh, you know, PR channel, then who's going to know about it except for you? Um, so I think that that's just, you know, like Ashley was saying, sometimes it seems so, you know, obvious that these things are happening to you within that company or, you know, if you're the lead of a brand, but it, it's so important to make sure that, that that's visible to the public and people of interest, um, so. Agree. Yes, absolutely. And as uh, Nico, and I think one last point on this is what you reminded me of is companies are doing great things, but if no one knows about them, with the exception of their internal staff and a customer, I don't know, they're not maximizing it. So all the good things you, your company, your staff, all those good things that you guys are doing would be something that would be wonderful to share with the public. One last comment. Um, I met a gentleman once and he was a cannabis company investor um man a few words unlike myself and he said what i look for is i look for communications that are telling me what they're going to be doing and then i look for communications to tell me that they've done those things so really he was straight down to the facts tell me what you're going to be doing and then let me know when those are completed because then i'll know you guys are doing what you say you're going to be doing so that is really the essence of of pr mm -hmm. yeah I also think, your brand. Yeah. And I also think too, like even beyond, you know, getting those communications out in like a press release format, like thinking about how um, on the PR end, we also help, you know, putting together case studies for a client, showing, you know, how that company has helped X, Y, and Z clients deal with, you know, certain challenges that they were facing. Um, that's just a great, you know, collateral piece and tool that can be repurposed. Let's say you're at a conference, let's say you're meeting with potential investors to just show actionable things that you've done. Um, also just having, you know, media coverage on the company or brand is also key to showing, let's say to your board on a quarterly basis, um, how you're appearing in the news and, and how it's, it's those added benefits. Definitely. All right. So we've gone through a lot of the basics of PR and different ways to use it. Um, but I want to kind of wrap everything up with, okay, now you got your PR, PR coverage. Now, what do you do with it? You know, you don't, it is living out there, you know, online, but how can we amplify it even further? So, um, we talked a little bit about, you know, like making sure that it's on your social media, but there's also some other ways that we can share this information with stakeholders um, and consumers. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I like to, as we, uh, as we referred earlier, referred to earlier, getting the press is one thing and then sharing it is a whole nother. So we, as we talked about sharing it on social, whether it's your Instagram or your LinkedIn or Twitter, um, putting it in a company newsletter so that your internal and external customers understand what you've secured. Um, getting 
framed PDFs for your um, lobby or your wall of fame, Let, um, emailing it individually to customers, we, or potential customers, we've helped people um, win awards and get a great deal of coverage. And then they've ordered um, uh, 50 extra magazines to send to um, current and potential customers to let them know of their successes. So once you get the success, once you get the news hit or the award or the opportunity to speak on a panel, um, which all would kind of fall under that PR thing, share it in as many ways as you can from you know digital sharing to printing out a PDF. Definitely. Creating a PDF, yeah. Yep, those are all great. Putting it on the website, putting it on the website as a blog. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, it can definitely be repurposed in that way too. Perfect. All right, well, how can somebody get a hold of the both of you if they would like to have a further conversation or even look at you for PR services? Um, provenmediaservices.com. Again, my name is Kim Prince. I'm on LinkedIn as well. So you can reach me through the website, through LinkedIn. Um, and as I like to say, feel free to call me. <laughs> so, and Nico. And yeah, um, usually the best way to reach out to me, I mean, I am on LinkedIn as well. I think you can see my name on the screen and, and uh, my email is neko at provenmediaservices.com. So you can always reach out to me via email or connect on LinkedIn. And Ashley, how about you? You wanna share your contact just because yes. you're such a great host, hostess, <laughs> yeah. moderator. Like Kim said, provenmediaservices.com. I'm also on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all the social medias. Um, and my email is ashley at, ash, sorry, ashley at provenmediaservices.com. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the panel today, ladies. And we hope that everyone that was watching got some great information on how to do PR for your cannabis company. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>